you and good afternoon. Senate Government Operations Committee starting somewhat late, but not so much given the fact that we were on the Senate floor for a while. We're also awaiting, awaiting the return of our chair, Jeanette, Senator Jeanette White, who's locked up in the Rules Committee meeting somewhere. But we wanted to make sure that we started moving through the bill. Um, we're still taking a look at S-124, the miscellaneous law enforcement bill amendments. And since the last time we spoke, Betsy had talked with, I, I presume had dealt with um, Mark Anderson and Dan Batsy and Drew Hazelton about some changes we made in the bill. So Betsy, if you could take us through some of those. I'm working off of the one that you emailed to me, to, uh, to all of us. So that's what, just so you know, that's what I'm looking at. Hi, thanks for the record, Betsy Ann Rask, Legislative Council. Uh, my internet has been acting up with the storm also, so. Just Is the storm where you are? Uh, yeah, we had some rain and I hear a little bit of thunder rolling through. So just give a shout if my internet freezes up. No, oh, it did. We had fun watching you totally frozen. <laughs> I was watching you frozen. <laughs> kind of like a Disney character. <laughs> So I sent you all draft 7.1 just with um, highlighting and um, I then removed the highlighting in case you do vote out this draft 7.1. The highlighting uh, just showed some of the substantive changes that you discussed to draft 6.1 that we reviewed yesterday. So I will just, um, I have the bill up here. Will you all just follow along with your own version so you don't need me to share? Yes. Me? Okay. You just so, emailed it to us. True and Dan, do you have it? Okay, everybody's got it. Mark, okay. So let's see. Um, page seven, I think, Betsy. Thank you. And on page seven, that was just pointing out, I think you already gave final approval to this, but this is just to confirm that the rule adoption deadline for the Criminal Justice Training Council to adopt rules regarding alternate routes to uh, certification aside from those at the training academy, police academy is July 1, 2023. I think you already discussed that, but I just left that flag in there. Um, also just to remind the language at the top of page six um, would say that by next year, July 1, 2021, that's the deadline for the council to structure its program so that a level two officer can get to level three certification without having to restart over. And those are both okay with everybody? Yep. Okay. All right. Then thank move on to the next one, the next change. Page 14. Thank you. I'll just give a reminder before we get to page 14 that on page 11, line 19, just a reminder that that was uh, the change from yesterday that um, an agency, a law enforcement agency would have to report a credible, a credible complaint that an officer committed category B conduct to the council. So that was everybody, everybody liked that. Everybody yep. liked that. Okay, so I'll move on to 14. Uh, here's just a reminder actually on page 13 in regard to the Vermont Crime Information Center that you deleted the section that would have required the VCIC to provide the quarterly reports to towns without a local police department. Just a reminder that went away so you don't see it anymore. But I'll get finally to that page 14 line 20. Um, here is the addition of the chief of the Capitol Police Department. Um, getting added to the Law Enforcement Advisory Board. So that yep. would bring the LEAB up to a total of 18 members. And therefore, you'll see on page 16, line four, that that would bring the quorum up to 10. Yep. Great. Okay. All right. Then the next. I presume one. if anybody has issues with any of this, you'll speak up. Sounds good. Then we get into the matter of dispatch and there's two changes from yesterday. Um, here, I just flagged on page 18, line seven and eight, that the commissioner of public safety would be required to adopt rules that set forth the rates for dispatch functions performed under this subsection. 
and there is corresponding language. So yesterday, draft 6.1 said that those rules may provide for future dates for imp implementing these rates or imposing the rates upon the uh, subscribers to DPS dispatch functions. Instead of that discretionary may, there was further conversation yesterday. Um, I got feedback from uh, Senator Collimore and Senator White and Commissioner of Public Safety about concerns about imposing rates on municipalities, for example, that uh, use DPS dispatch. And the request was to um, have language to say that there would be a minimum of three years before these rates actually get imposed. So if you scroll down to page 20, that language got added to the session law about this, the uh, rule adoption, um, these dis dis dispatch rule adoption. And there's a couple changes here on page 20, starting on line eight. The first is that in the prior S-124 draft, Unlike the other rule adoption deadlines for other agencies affected by this bill, those other agencies said that rules have to be adopted by XYZ date unless that deadline is extended by LCAR. LCAR has authority to extend rule adoption deadlines. Well, in the original version of S-124 as passed Senate GovOps, this was a one-off for the DPS dispatch rates where uh, the committee wanted a hard and fast date that the dispatch rules had to be adopted by July 1, 2021 period without any sort of uh, ability to have rule extensions, rule adoption extensions. But with the understanding that these rules don't have to be in place, or at least that was my understanding, don't have to, um, don't, you don't have to have something happen by July 1, 2021, um, I added in the language just to allow a little bit more flexibility and say, in case something comes up with the rule adoption to add in that authority, like it says in the other parts of the bill, that it's still a deadline to adopt these dispatch rules setting forth the rates by July 1, 2021, but adding in the language that LCAR could extend that adoption deadline because that would be consistent with the rest of the bill. Okay. Secondly, is that uh, last Matt, sentence there. Oops, sorry. Oh, sorry, Senator Clarkson. <coughs> Allison. So, yeah, c'est moi. Uh, Betsy Ann, you prefaced this a, a bit on page 20 by saying it was in session law. And I know this is embarrassing to ask, but I will. How do we know that we go into session law here? I'm sorry, I still don't know that. No problem, no problem. So. There's session law and there's statutory law. Both have the force and effect of law. Right. It's just that, How would I know? Uh, so this. you would know by the introductory language. So let's just take a look on page 20. Here's an easy way to tell. Compare line five to line 14. You can tell line 14 is amending statutory law because it says section 18. Ah, period. yes. 24 VSA chapter 71 is Got amended it. to read. That's an amendment to statutory law. Whereas you can see the intro on line five um, for section 17 just provides a heading without actually amending statute. But live and learn. Yeah. So, oh, so thank you. Am I not the only one that had that question? No, I doubt it. <laughs> so, so is that, so, Okay, I'll ask you later, but okay. So that, and, and and we decide the difference between, I mean, I, obviously when we're amending a statute, we're men, amending a statute, but when we're changing something in which we are asking to be done, we're asking rules to be changed here, that's still a statutory request. I mean, but it's not, it, until it becomes a rule, it doesn't, isn't in statute. So rules, for the most part, don't get codified in statute, except for some Department of Fish and Wildlife rules that get codified in Title X appendix. Um, this is just a requirement in session law. We usually reserve session law for provisions of law that are temporary in nature, right. whereas statutory law is reserved for ongoing requirements. No, I, I, I've got nature. that difference. I just was curious why this would be there. But anyway. All right, let's move forward before the, before the bl blizzard comes. <laughs> so section 17, 
big picture is this rule adoption deadline. Um, since it, the C kind of changed about these uh, dispatch rules generally, part of the impetus for having a hard and fast July 1, 2021 deadline before was because there was the requirement to have those technical and operational standards in rule. That's gone away. So this would just make it consistent that a little bit of flexibility to allow LCAR to extend, um, but there's still an expectation that the dispatch rate rules would be adopted by July 1, 2021. And I, as I think we understood from the commissioner, um, department has a pretty good idea already of what those rates would be. Okay. But moving on to the second issue here, the last sentence here of section 17. Here is the language that would say that these dispatch rates shall provide in the rule shall provide a minimum of three years following final adoption before the dispatch rates set forth in the rules are imposed. So there's that language that would give, for example, municipalities three years after the dispatch rates are adopted to um, pretty much ramp up and prepare for paying for those, those rates for dispatch. So by then, after three years, they would be ready to raise the rates anyway. <laughs> So does that language work from your perspective? Yes, I see Senator Collimore has a question. Brian. No, I don't. I, I just want to thank you, Betsy, for doing this. And I realize in, in one sense it was last minute, but I think all along I have been receiving uh, requests from especially volunteer uh, fire people. And, and Senator Polina is correct. What I didn't want to have happen with this bill would be this tsunami of new rates and charges imposed on a municipality or a volunteer fire department uh, without the ability to sort of see it coming and be able to be prepared for it. So this works perfectly for me and I really appreciate Betsy and I'm doing this. I hope the rest of the committee understands where I'm coming from here. Because it was at my urging that we changed it. Sounds good. It makes sense. I think okay. it's great. Oh, we're getting Zoom bombed. We have <laughs> yeah, a chair. It took show, so us your, show us your battle scars. You're muted. You're muted. It's probably best that you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> She's blowing her computer up. Yeah. Yeah, it would have blown the computer up. Now don't forget you're on YouTube. Oh, I know. Tell us what I'll you really think, Chair White. Right. Well, so I guess they weren't pushovers. They weren't put in your hands this time. Well, I think that the biggest issue that I see is that two of the committee members don't agree with the bill. Right. Which, in my opinion, is fine, but they should allow the bill out to be voted sure. on the floor. And if it gets voted down on the floor, it gets voted down on the floor. Right, but if, that yeah. would be a three, two vote, which would let it out, right? Mm -hmm. Did they not want to hold the vote because of that? Oh, it got very, very complicated because um, somehow Tim got lost and then we all went back in. And when we went back in, they it couldn't be on Zoom or on YouTube and then Tim had was in a car, had to go someplace, and and so they put off the vote until tomorrow. That's the bottom line. So, and which, uh, and I take it that we're talking about our election bill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've been going Anthony, through one. We've been going through one twenty-four. Good. Did and you already pass it? We didn't pass it yet. We were gonna wanted you to have a chance to vote on it. You'll but find you an email from Betsy with with point seven point one, I think it is, in an email. Okay. And we're on page. Well, we're kind of finishing up page twenty. We're right? on page twenty. Actually, we're oh, on. good. Betsy. And I was just going over that um, three-year rollout on the dispatch rate rule with the language on page twenty the last sentence of section 17 saying that the dispatch rate rule shall provide a minimum of three years following final adoption before the dispatch rates set forth and the rules are imposed. Why don't you continue chairing Anthony since I haven't been involved and I don't know where you are so 
We're right here, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> okay, Betsy. All right, so then the bill moves into EMS. And I'll scroll down. Thank you, Josh. There is one thing I just wanted to point out um, on page 23. Um, this relates in, in 20, 24 VSA 2682. This relates to the change from uh, eliminating the authority of the state board and transferring it to the Department of Health. And I just wanted to point out that you can't see the language here because it's hidden by those three asterisks. But I did just want to be sure that you're aware that um, the existing law, 20, 24 VSA 2682, allows the State Board of Health to adopt rules um, regarding EMS districts. And there's language in 2682A3, I believe, I'm pulling it up now, that says the State Board can adopt rules but the rules can be repealed within 90 days following final adoption upon the vote, majority vote of all the EMS districts. That would, first of all, that's kind of an oddity because um, usually when a, once a rule is adopted, it, sure. it has to take the whole pro rulemaking process to uh, repeal the rule. Um, but another oddity here, I just, or maybe not an oddity, I just wanted to point out that the law wouldn't change with, with, although the Department of Health would take over the state board's powers, there's still that language and statute that would say now that it would be the Department of Health under this introductory language of A to adopt rules, but there's still that language in 2682A3 that says any rule may be repealed within 90 days of the date of its adoption by a majority vote of all the district boards. The so EMS board. To, yeah, the, EM, the EMS district boards. Um, so I just you like to, that, right, Drew? <laughs> I see Drew shake his head, yes. All right. I don't know that that's ever actually happened, but... <laughs> but it's nice to know it's there. <laughs> nice to know it's there. So I just wanted to point okay. that out. But that, that you didn't, no one requested that change, but I just wanted to point that that's, that's there in the law. So that was hidden behind those three asterisks, that's, right? That's there. It's sitting there. It's interesting. That's sitting there behind them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but the, here I'll just point out at the bottom of page 25, um, we already talked about this, but in section 20 is that uh, cleanup language following S-182 to ensure that to be able to practice as EMS personnel, that you have to be affiliated with an affiliated agency, um, even when you're licensed in order to practice. So there, I just wanted to point it out. There, so it's on page 25, line 20. There's the language about needing to be affiliated with an affiliated agency. Got it. So, th and that you'll, sh I'll, I'll point it out in a couple other places um, as we go through it. Um, there's another reference to it on page 27, line 17. That you have to be affiliated with an affiliated agency in order to be able to practice fully within the scope of practice for your license level. Yep. But the substantive change we talked about yesterday is on page 28. And this is in regard to on line seven. This is in regard to um, that psychomotor skills testing. So the language that was proposed is that psychomotor skills testing for EMRs and EMTs is accomplished by either the demonstration of those psychomotor skills competencies as part of an education program or by the NREMT. And what we discussed yesterday is adding in that language on page 28, line seven, that you can have your skills testing be part of your education, but it has to be as approved by the department. Um, so the department, just to confirm that the department still maintains control over the education and has to ensure, has to approve the education um, 
so that the education does actually adequately test psychomotor skills testing. Okay. So and the department that, like that. Does that look okay to our EMS stakeholders here? Everybody right. says yes. And another reminder is that remember you remove that extra section that would have eliminated NREMT psychomotor skills testing as an option. Um, your discussion yesterday was to leave it as an either or and not completely eliminate um, NREMT psychomotor skills testing as an option just in case there is some education program that doesn't adequately test psychomotor skills. So just a reminder that that went away. Okay. Okay, so EMS stakeholders. Everybody says yes. Okay. Um, you'll see at the top of page 29, line three, or line two is another reference to needing to be affiliated with an affiliated agency. This actually addressed the uh, concern that was raised in the house. Um, this is about a person being able to get licensed without examination um, if they're either a medic um, in the US Armed Forces or they are, um, let's see. No, that's sorry, that was pardon, pardon. That's not page 29, line eight instead. You're either a medic or you're affiliated with an affiliated agency and you're NREMT uh, registered. Um, just, just a reminder on page 29, starting on line 11, is that requirement to um, have the entry level certification for Vermont EMS first responders. I'm just bringing up these little reminders because yesterday on um, the committee asked um, our EMS stakeholders to consider all these requirements for DOH to come up um, to perform the duties prescribed by this bill and to get back to me with a date by which those could be accomplished. And it's my understanding that the bill's original deadline of which was overall July 1, 2021 works for the department. So just wanna put that on everyone's radar that that, that that date that you already had in there seems workable as I understand it. Okay. And just a reminder in regard to that new EMS Education Council on page 32, line five, that they are will would sponsor training, but not approve it. So we already discussed that, but that's just a reminder there. That language about approval went away. And then on page 33, section 22, you'll see the overall July 1, 21, Deadlines are still in those EMS transitional provisions in section 22. And then, I think that was, oh, and then the last thing I just flagged is the effective date at the bottom page 39, because it um, had an overall July 1, 2020 effective date but with the future effective date of the um, date on which the NREMT psychomotor skills testing would be completely eliminated. But since you're getting rid of that section, you don't need the future effective date for it. So overall, this bill takes effect on July 1, 2020. Yahoo. <laughs> Dan? Um, I did have uh, one quick question that I found when I was reading this over, and it is on page 34, um, line six. Uh, the way this is written, it would require any existing instructor coordinator who is currently licensed to be licensed at the highest level of whatever the three levels of licensure are that we come up with. I'm a little concerned that we haven't come up with what those license levels will be yet. And uh, I'm not sure that every existing instructor coordinator would necessarily be um, appropriate to be at the highest level uh, pending whatever the outcome of that discussion is. Is there a way that we could create some language in here to put some discretion into that or to, um, and Drew, I, I, I'd be interested in your feedback on this as well um, because this came out of the advisory committee 
but I'm just a little concerned that if we put everybody into that last piece, there may be some folks that probably shouldn't, you know, like a, if a person received their instructor coordinator two weeks before this goes into effect, they're the most junior IC we would have, but by rule here or by law here, they would be the most senior level of instructor coordinator. That's concerning to me. So I don't disagree with um, Dan's concern um, as to how to you know, correct that, I'm not certain. I think we could certainly create a process. Uh, I just think we need a little language uh, buffer there to enable that. Any ideas that that would be though? It's a, something that's required to submit the interview at the highest sense, high sense level. I mean, you don't want to say something when, wherever possible, whenever possible, or something like that. That's too open ended. You want to say shall be deemed to be at the license level consistent with the new scope of practice with the new levels of instructor coordinators? Yes, that's exactly what I want to say. Okay. She's amazing that way, isn't she? I was going to say, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing this is her job. Yeah. It's good. Very good. Because I was going to say <laughs> whatever was appropriate, but I think that's, that's really good. That's exactly right. Anything else? I want to remind people that Senator Brace, it's Senator Brace one who said he had to leave at three. So just saying that tonight before you got here, Senator Brace said he had to leave at three. And then we had some talk about not having this to not having this be a particularly extended session. <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> but on the other hand, back to the rules committee. She has a lot of work to do with them. Okay. Are you going but to it meet seems like we might we might be pretty close to being able to vote on this so that's why i bring it up in the time we have left we have 15 minutes or so mark mark uh, uh, i have a question posed to me this morning by uh chief burkell chair of the criminal justice training council asking why the commissioner of corrections was removed from the council i guess we just noticed that actually that was done three years ago it's all, it's been. <laughs> it's all, that's all news. That was an old change. Okay. That, uh, just for, uh, I guess. The Glad they're just noticing it. Uh, well, surprise. I, I guess for the record, uh, there might be a desire to pursue that in the future, but I don't think it's anything to do with this year. Okay. Sounds good. Anything else? Nope. Also, thank you. Thank you. So Dan, Drew, everybody's okay? This has been a long and windy road, let me tell you. <laughs> Jeanette, you feeling okay about this at this point? Yeah. So are we ready to vote? I know, realizing Betsy has to make that small change. So I don't know whether we could, you know, we could choose to vote based on not having seen that small change. <clears throat> Otherwise, we'd have to come back again together again to do it. And I'm assuming that we have permission from the rules committee to vote on it because we did vote on it before it was sent to appropriations and they sent it back to us. So I'm going to assume that we're good. Okay, Brian. So Betsy, would it be 8.1? Make it a 7.2 since it's such a, mi it's a minor change. Okay. If that Can works. I Motion, Madam Chair. And I can go for it now. Here, sorry. I'm sorry. Just be here today. Um, so wait, just speak with Betsy. You're making the change now. Yeah, I can do it right now okay. if you want to just take a look at it. Oh. It'll just take me a sec. But you want to talk about the weather? <laughs> it's hot. It is hot. It's hot where I am. Betsy said they have thunderstorms up there right now, though. Well, there's. they said in Washington, we got a thing from Matt Romeo that, that said in Washington we and about Orange County. Oh, okay. we, we, were, we were jealous that some places were getting rain and we weren't. 
Jeanette, you and I were left out of the rain. Mm -hmm. So Jeanette, while while we're making weather talk, uh, Jeanette, when are when is the rules meeting convening again? Sometime tomorrow. We'll we'll all petition to get Zoom invites to that, even though you're the only one presenting. I want to see her in action. Uh, well, you, you can always Zoom it. But it's more well, fun. To in a room. I think I gave all my arguments today, so I'm sure you were brilliant. Yeah. Well, I I think that it's legitimate to be um, opposed to the bill, but I think it also um, Tim very clearly told us that we had permission to go forward with bills that were not necessarily unanimous and people should feel free to vote against bills because we're kind of in a, a regular session now and we don't always all agree on the floor. So, or in committee. Well, opposition to the bill should not keep it from coming, to, you know, some opposition to the bill should not keep it from coming to the floor, obviously. Right, hopefully rules will be before floor because, um, Otherwise, you know, we, if it's controversial enough that we're not going to suspend rules, then we need Thursday, Friday to move it. And it's got to get to the house. And um, uh, who knows how long it takes to move over there. I'm not sure that this is one, though, that has to, um, like the uh, municipal ones that we've done that really need to pass in order to allow them to go forward because the Secretary of State <laughs> is going forward with the preparations, which is what the governor indicated he should do. So they're having all the envelopes printed and the postal stuff, uh, the indicias put on them. So that's all going forward because that's preparation work. And so I, I don't know that this one is crucial to have um, fast track. Fast track. Yeah. Betsy, how are you doing? Betsy's still from How are you doing, Betsy? Oh, I sent it to you. Um, you should get it in your email. Yep, there it is. Well, fast track or not, it'd be nice to resolve it and move on. Yeah, Everybody's it would. Safe, I think I'm, I'm done with it. Seven point two. And that's page thirty-four again. Line seven and eight. There it is. Shall be deemed to be licensed at the level that is consistent with the scope of practice of the new license levels. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I liked it a lot before. Now I like it even more. <laughs> yeah, let's 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 do it again. <laughs> Brian, you want to make a motion? I do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would move that the committee vote out draft number 7.2 of S124 a favorably. Allison, it's up to you now. Is, is, sorry, I just have to ask, is that our motion or is our motion to amend S124 first? Details. Um, <laughs> amend 124 with version seven with, with draft, draft seven point one two. Could I withdraw my original motion and now move that that we vote to amend S twenty four with draft number seven point two. That I will vote on. <laughs> okay. Senator Bray. Yes. Senator Clarkson. Yes, indeed. Co Senator Collimore. Yes. Senator Polina. Yes. Senator White. Yes. And, and, oh, go ahead. Second, Please, second go vote. Ahead. Thank you. I'll move further that we now adopt a version, here look back, 7.2 of S124 as amended, or as vote on S124 as amended. Okay. Thank you, perfect. Okay, Senator Bray. Yes. 
Senator Clarkson. Yes. Senator Collimore. Yes. Senator Polina. Yes. Senator White. Yes. Thank you very much. And Senator Collimore, you did such a magnificent job this morning. Yes, he got he got big kudos. Thank you. Would, would you like to report this? <laughs> no. <laughs> this was this your baby. baby. This was your bill. This is I your know. baby. I know, but if somebody else wants to report it, because I'm, OK. No. <laughs> When we first talked about this, you said you loved this and that you had to report it. Oh. You're the one who dragged us through all this. Yeah. And Madam Chair, the reason I was laughing with Senator Baruth. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. that. I, I already understood what you wanted to do, but I further understood that we hadn't read the bill the third time, so we couldn't move <laughs> to suspend the rules unless we put it in all final stages, which yeah. we didn't do. Right. So it wasn't I just want to thank Drew and Dan and Mark and others who stuck with us through this process. Yep. Here, here. We hope you're we hope you're pleased. Well, thank you. We greatly appreciate the work that you're doing. And we'll do more next year if we're still here. Well, we thank should you. we should actually <laughs> Mark is adjourn, go home, get reelected, and come back. I don't want to just stay here. <laughs> Mark, I thought I'd had an email from you this morning, but it turns out it's another Mark Anderson in Norwich. Who well, entirely different. So I would think, those, oh my God. <laughs> those of us who are on the committee, do we want to talk? I mean, Drew and Dan and Mark, feel free to leave if you'd like to. I just wonder whether we need to talk a little bit about scheduling before we adjourn. Goodbye. It's very productive. Good work. Um, I I think that um, I had a note this morning from Sarah Copenhansis, and there are, we have one, two, three, four, five more of their bills. Yeah. I don't know if we, we want to take some testimony. If we want to take some testimony on any of them, she did say that if if we didn't want to do all of them. I'll tell you what they are. One is about livestock running at large. I have no idea what that is. One is about incompatible lo local offices. One is about um, allowing childcare expenses to be um, uh, taken out of your campaign finances. One is uh, the sunset on the boards and commissions. And one is something about veteran status on applications, which I can't think came from Tom Stevens committee. I, ju I just went out. Um, I don't know why you just You're back. told me I had to do it. It's okay. The Zoom, it's the zoom bogger. <laughs> that zoom bogger. You just can't. It's playing games with us all the time. So those are the bills that we have. And okay. I don't know if we want to just have a walkthrough of each of them so that we can hear what they are and if we want to deal with them or not. I didn't bring them up at rules today at all because I don't know what we want to do, but I think, yes, Chris. I'm sorry to interrupt. I have to leave for a meeting the speaker asked me to go to. Okay. Do you want us to, would you prefer to have some kind of a walkthrough of each of these so we can see if they're important or not? Uh, I trust the discretion of everyone who's going to stay here and think about it as oh, a group. Yeah, nice. Out. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not kidding. That's what I mean. Oh, like, passing the buck. All right. No, well, yeah, yeah. I want to hear them all. Just I, go. Want, I want to walk through Just from the sponsor go. and legislative council for all the bills <laughs> on our wall that we haven't heard about yet, because you know. Just go away, Chris Bray. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of. So, I'm, I'm just making an assumption by the, not the titles, but the subject of these bills that they're all probably pretty brief. Yeah, I think, and I think that they were all pretty non-controversial. I, I have no idea like what the incompatible local offices one is or livestock running at large. I can guess what the childcare expenses, what that right. is. And boards and commissions, Brian, that's our bill that John Gannon did. And the veteran status, I I don't know either. So, it, maybe we should just have a run through of those. I, I, I think that's a great idea. <clears throat> so, when do we want to do that? 
we don't have anything scheduled for tomorrow, do we, Gail? You're muted. You're muted. Now you're just ignoring us. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're there. Sorry, every my paper slipped here. We have sheriff's finance okay. on the agenda for tomorrow, and I'm not sure if we need to reword that. I'm not. I don't know what that is, and I also well, don't know who to invite. It's COVID. It's COVID uh, revenue loss, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So you might <clears throat> put COVID, COVID revenue loss for sh departments, sh sheriff departments. So we'll do that. Who should right we invite after tomorrow? What? Who should we invite to that? The sheriffs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't know who else to invite. Um. <laughs> oh, you know who else? Maybe a side judge because they are the budget. They do the sheriff's budgets, uh, the, the county budgets. They do the county budgets, but they wouldn't the know what the loss is. Okay, we could the invite county. them. Yeah. They they don't they wouldn't have any idea what the losses were, but we could invite them. Who is that? But it will impact county gov. Yeah, it's it's worth making sure that T is crossed. Jack Anderson. <clears throat> Brian. Um, Thank you. So we could do that after the floor. I, I was just going to suggest a person that might be good to hear from on that because he's a former sheriff and now a side judge is Steve Bernard from Rock. Oh, good. He, yep. would, he would be able to talk from both sides. Okay, perfect. What's his last name, Senator? B E R N A R D, Bernard. Okay. And <clears throat> So if we talked about that after the floor tomorrow, that's enough, right? Well. Yes. Huh? Should we spend oh. some time on Friday going through some of these other yes, bills would, so that we can decide whether we need to hear the, more of them or not? I think sure. That's really, okay. We'll, we'll have a walkthrough of all five of those bills on on Tuesday, we're having the burn pit um, update. So we'll have <clears throat> the walkthrough on um, Wednesday. We may not feel like doing much of anything else after the burn pit update. I'll tell you, <clears throat> I didn't feel like doing anything after judiciary this morning, except going and puking. We were talking about child pornography. It was very yeah. disturbing, very yeah. disturbing. Um, <clears throat> uh, so we'll do that on Wednesday and then Thursday. If we can, on maybe on Thursday, start looking at um, what we put into place, you know, just a list of the things that we did this year for the to respond to the pandemic and uh, that would be both betsy and tucker if you have you know just a, a, a list of the things that we did and start to put them into <coughs> what might be i think that it was anthony and brian talked about a, a, a big bill that andrew perchlick had suggested that we and that that would be so that we have our thoughts of what we need to have in place should there be another one. Does that work, Betsy? So we would come up with, or we would take notes or? No, you would, you would I'm sorry to interrupt, but you would look at the bills that we've passed this session uh -huh. that relate to the COVID-19 emergency. And the idea would be to see if we could put all those into one bill so that if we had another emergency, we would just flip a switch you know, and they would automatically go into place. Okay, looking at the what you pass as temporary provisions yes. in order to determine whether to make <coughs> them permanent. Okay. Well, I don't know and whether permanent is the right word. It might be, yes. but to make them appropriate next time without having to go through all this process of hearings and whatnot. Gotcha, a permanent option for whenever an emergency comes up. Or an automatic right, but, kick in when an emergency comes up, whatever you right, think. Right, but 
but not a permanent solution. <laughs> yeah. So we could do that on um, Thursday. Is that what I said? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a whole week away. What day is today? Wednesday. Wednesday. <clears throat> so yeah. I heard two different things. I heard that we were going to do the walk through of the five bills on Friday. And I also heard we were going to do the walk through of the five bills on Wednesday. So I'm we're we're very dense. We need two walk throughs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, let's third time, third time is the charm. So the third time we'll okay. actually remember. Let's do them on Friday then and get them over with. And then we can decide if we need to schedule some for next week. Good catch, Gail. Can you furnish me the numbers of those five bills? I can. <clears throat> do you want to them now or do you want me to send them to you? Either way. H557, H608, H619, H650 and H769. 650 and what was the last one? 769. 769. Okay. Jeanette, yes. I, I, this is not necessarily a bill, but we had mentioned a week or so ago the money that municipalities had lost because of the emergency. <coughs> oh, right. I'd gotten, I'd gotten a letter from Barry City. Barry City, and then you had said that you had talked to Karen Horn about that. I'm just wondering, what did you talk to her about? I forget exactly what, what, what happened there. Appropriations is putting in uh, $16 million for that. And the way they did it is it's going to be not just grants to the towns, but actual losses. So they're going to have to um, put in for reimbursement. Okay. And they based it on um, population of the towns. So I really, so that's pretty good. Yeah. So you're pretty sure that's going to happen. That's what Jane talked about <clears throat> this morning in the all Senate meeting, I think. I must have been dozing. Yeah, I don't easy, recall that either. <clears throat> easy so to do. What if, what if a municipality was very small but they lost a lot of money. I'm just trying to think of a situation where just linking it to how many people live there might not be the best way to decide how to distribute. No, that isn't the way they're going to distribute. That's the way they figured out the amount to put into the bill itself. Some towns oh. may have no losses. Okay. And some may have a lot of losses. So basically, it'll be a grant program for the municipalities. Right, but they and they'll have what they have to do is say the Prove towns the losses. Have, yeah. <clears throat> Barry City lost uh, eight hundred thousand dollars because they couldn't schedule the the opera house and right. and they had to pay overtime for their they have an EMS system of their own and I I don't know what but sure. um, then they would apply they would send in a request for that much money. Sure. Good. All right. Okay. So does that mean we're on that? Nice job today, Anthony. <clears throat> nice job. You, and you, you both, both did a really good job on the floor. It. No, I meant as vice chair, but that's OK. Well, that oh. too. Well, the, the best thing I did was I brought Betsy into the conversation. Indeed. <laughs> that's always a good idea. All right. Oh, cool. All right. So we'll get out early today. <clears throat> we do. See you Great. tomorrow. Well, well thank good. you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.